Hey everybody, Josh Erdman from AmericanBedBugHeaterRentals.com. Today I'm going to show you how to prep your room for a bed bug heat treatment. The first step is to download the heat treatment checklist from the order confirmation email or on the how to set up bed bug heaters page at AmericanBedBugHeaterRentals.com. Alright, first thing I look at when I come into a room is where the closet doors are, which way they're hanging. The whole trick with heat treat is to keep constant airflow in a nice tight circle. So if you've got a door that opens one way or another, it may affect that circle. So that's normally what I look like, look at. In this room, these doors are not really going to be an issue. So I'm just going to set this up in a clockwise fashion. So we're basically going to shoot to the wall, to the window, over to this area, and then right back to the heater. Now before you do any bed bug heat treatment, and before you set up your rental, you also need to do preparation. So the first thing I look for in a room is anything that might be hanging on the wall. Now if it's up there mechanically fastened, meaning nailed or screwed, leave it alone. If it's up there with a 3M, a glue or a tape, you need to take it down or it will come down. So we'll take this guy off the wall because it is with 3M. And this is just real thin and light so we can just throw it right on the bed. It'll get heat treated no problem. The next thing I'm going to do is because we're blowing the air this way, so I'm going to pull this bed away from the wall. You don't need to pull it that far away, just enough so you have room to get around and so that the air can move. Now, when I move the bed, I also am looking at what kind of bed this is. Is it a mattress and a box spring? Is there a bunch of stuff under the bed? Anything that can hamper the airflow, you're going to want to adjust. This bed is just a simple mattress on a frame, so it can sit there. Very simple. Um, also, I notice when I pull out the mattress, we've got an outlet here that's on here, outlet cover. So I'm just going to go ahead and take that guy off. All that does is just allow the heat to penetrate and get into the wall in case there's anything that may have crawled in there. I see we've got another one back here. So I'll just get this guy out of the way for you. And again, I'm not going anywhere with them. I'm just setting them on the floor. It's not going to affect anything with the heat. Even with them being plastic, there's no harm of them being melted. So I'll check here. And I'm glad I moved that because I found a plant. This is also something else you don't want to leave in your room. Most plants don't do well at 140 degrees. So I'll make sure I take that out of here. Now, as the air comes around, I'm looking at the, the desk here. There's not a whole lot of meat to this thing, meaning there's not a lot that the heat can't get through. So I'm not gonna move it real far. Just gonna slide it a couple inches away. I will remove the outlet covers from this one as well. And while doing that, I you notice I unplugged the TV. Electronics, video games, systems like that are all fine in the heat. Just don't have them on while it's at hot. So don't come back in here when it's 140 degrees and try to turn on your TV because that's how you break something. So oh, there's one more outlet cover back here. So I'll get this guy off of here. All right. Leave those down, I'm gonna pull this out. Now one thing with, with totes or in this case, a, a bunch of stuffed animals, Again, heat treats about air movement. So if this is really packed tight and there's, there's not a ton in here, I could take some stuff out and throw it on the bed just so that the heat can penetrate it. This really isn't that bad. It's a wicker basket. It's not a plastic hard tote. The air is going to penetrate and the heat will get in there. So that's okay. One more outlet cover. Down there, we'll just check behind the door. And then we've got a couple more switch plates here, so we'll just get these off. Now, in most situations where you have a, you know, a small bed bug infestation, you're going to do the rental and do it yourself. It hasn't been going on very long. You don't necessarily need to take all of these off. But if you want to get the most successful heat treat you can, take them off. It doesn't take a whole heck of a lot of time, and it gives you a lot better result. All right, so I'm looking around. We've got the closet here. There's not a ton in this closet. There's not a ton on the floor. Um, there's a box with a bunch of odds and ends, but most of it's toys. Again, the heat will get in there just fine. One thing to mention in a closet is if you have a closet that's full of clothes, you want to separate them a little bit. So this one's 
all kind of pushed together. We're just gonna make a little space in here, spread them out, give it some room for the air to move around in. And that's all there is to that. So if you've got large totes or if the bottom is just packed full of totes, what we normally do is take them out, take the lid off, and then you know set the first one down and then rotate the next one 90 degrees and stack them up. That way you'll have places for the air to get. All right, so everything looks like it's prepped in here. So now you can watch the video on how to actually set up the bed bug heaters, which you can find on the How to Set Up Bed Bug Heaters page at AmericanBedBugHeaterRentals.com.